in time of light, in time of darkness, we gather in this place seeking the solace of faith and to be found by the mercy of the living God with tears and with laughter, with the memories of the long years. On this day we share that which is good and that which brings us comfort and hope. Welcome this morning to our service and uh, if you could extend that welcome to each other this morning. Following are the intimations. If you give your offering through the open plate, there's an opportunity to do that. At the end of the service, there are offering bags at the front here and also at the vestibule on the way out. You're welcome to stay behind or go to North Hall, as you say, for teas and coffees. It will be served there after the service. Going forward, we need more volunteers to help with this. And if you can do that, there is a rotor sheet in the vestibule. I'd like to say thank you to all who helped at Doors Open Day yesterday. Marvellous effort by all, by, by, by the team. And there was over 90 people who visited the church yesterday, so that was marvellous indeed. The coffee shop uh, is open during the week, Tuesday to Thursday, 10 a.m. to 2 p.m. And Friday, 10 to 12 noon, down at the South Hall, and you will be made most welcome. And our pastoral care book is available here uh, after the service. The next film night is on Friday, 23rd of September, 7.30pm in the North Hall and it's Fisherman's Friends. If you wish to go, uh, please see one of the fellowship team. Cadder Singers meet this week in the North Hall from 7 to 9pm. If you want to come and have a good sing, you'd be very welcome to join them. Girls Group Brigades on Tuesday, Boys Brigade Monday and Friday. If you go to their website, you'll get full details. And the Guild start back this week, 15th of September, 7.30pm. The speaker is Irene McClure. Subject is My Journey to Oriah. We, the Guild say we hope there'll be a good turnout of members to support Irene. And as always, anyone interested is very welcome. The Guild are obviously aware of the mourning of our nation with the passing of our Queen and part of the meeting will be an opportunity to share reflections about the Queen and to remember the Royal Family in prayer. And if you have a reflection that you wish to share, please contact Winnie, the Guild Convener. The Guild Dedication Service is next Sunday, as it is the Harvest Service as well. And the Men's Club will be starting back on the 4th of October. It's a bit of advance notice this, but our topic uh, is Racing, Rallying and Classics, a Lifetime Obsession Brian jokes. So, look forward to that, Brian. <laughs> so, these are oh, one other intimation. I, we'll be preparing another newsletter soon. If you have any news that you want to share, please get in touch with either Brian or myself uh, by, the, by the end of the week. Okay, that's all intimations. One more, my wife just nodding her head. Is the, if anybody wants any cooking apples uh, from the man's tree. Oh, they're finished. They're finished. Oh, more next week. I'll try and get to the higher branches. So that's, uh, I'm, I'm, I'm glad they've all gone. So let's take a few moments now and we come to God in prayer. Let us pray. Gracious God, most high, monarch of a distant kingdom, and yet so near to us through Jesus Christ, we come to share at this time our sadness and our loss we come to speak of things that weigh down our hearts and the time of parting and sorrow you comfort reaches us in the coldness of our loss as we feel that as a nation. Our sense of things never returning to how they were. You seek us out, your steadiness and your comfort. 
In the emptiness you fill us with love, in the darkness you bathe us with light. Come, holy God, take from us the burden of guilt and fear, that we may walk upon your earth, confident of your mercy, embraced by your grace, forgiven through Christ. For the words and thoughts and deeds which have made this world a little bleaker, a little harsher, a little less humane, forgive us. Take from us the things that cause us hurt or harm and remove us from the impulse to selfish actions or unkind behaviour. Set us free today to live the life of hope and generosity that you wish for all your children. May you open our heart, Lord, and may we receive Christ with joy. And may we know your spirit embracing us with love. This we pray through Jesus Christ, who has taught us all to pray, saying, Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Amen. morning is taken from the book of Philippians chapter 2 verses 1 to 11. Imitating Christ's humility. Therefore if you have any encouragement from being united with Christ, if any comfort from his love, if any common sharing in the spirit, if any tenderness and compassion, then make my joy complete by being like-minded, having the same love, being in one in spirit and of one mind. Do nothing out of selfish ambition or vain conceit. Rather, in humility, value others above yourselves, not looking to your own interests, but each of you to the interests of others. In your relationships with one another, have the same mindset as Christ Jesus, who, being in the very nature God, did not consider equality with God something to be used to his own advantage. Rather, he made himself nothing, 
by taking the very nature of a servant, being made in human likeness, and being found in appearance as a man, he humbled himself by becoming obedient to death, even death on a cross. Therefore, God exalted him to the highest place and gave him the name that is above every name, that in the name of Jesus, every knee should bow in heaven and on earth and under the earth and every tongue acknowledge that Jesus Christ is Lord, to the glory of God the Father. Amen. Thanks be to God. Thank you, Susan. Since her accession to the throne in 1952, the Queen has continued the practice of her father and grandfather by broadcasting each Christmas day to the Commonwealth of Nations. These broadcasts began on radio, but were televised from 1957 onwards. On five other occasions, she has broadcast to the nation the outbreak of the Gulf War, 1991, the death of Princess Diana, 97, the death of the Queen Mother, 2002, at her Diamond Jubilee, 2012, and during the COVID-19 crisis, 2020. Her messages are marked by several common themes that matter greatly to her. A commitment to the Commonwealth as a partnership bound by friendship and shared goals. A determination to serve people irrespective of rank, situation or circumstance. A love of her own family across its different generations. Her devotion to the example of Jesus. A sense of the common good of the peoples of the United Kingdom and a conviction that the most important people were often those who worked faithfully for their local communities. Her Christmas speeches have been a great Christmas tradition throughout the years, and I'm sure you have enjoyed listening to those wonderful, inspiring talks that she gave to the nation. What we're going to do this morning is that different folks from the congregation are going to come up and they're going to read a short excerpt from some of her uh, Christmas messages down throughout the generations. Since my accession 10 months ago, your loyalty and affection have been an immense support and encouragement. I want to take this Christmas Day, my first opportunity, to thank you with all my heart. At my coronation next June, I shall dedicate myself and you to your service. I want to show that the crown is not merely an abstract symbol of our unity, but a personal and living bond between you and me. The Commonwealth bears no resemblance to the empires of the past. It is an entirely new conception built on the highest qualities of the spirit of man, friendship, loyalty, and the desire for freedom and peace. To that new conception of an equal partnership of nations and races, I shall give myself heart and soul every day of my life. This year, I should like to speak especially to women. In many countries, custom has decreed that women should play a minor part in public affairs. It is difficult to realise that it was less than 50 years ago that women in Britain were first given the vote. Yet, in spite of these disabilities, it has been women who have breathed gentleness and care into the harsh progress of mankind. The struggles against inhuman prejudice against squalor, ignorance and disease have always owed a great deal to the determination and tenacity of women. The devotion of nuns and nurses, the care of mothers and wives, 
the service of teachers and the conviction of reformers are the real and enduring presence which women have always given. In the modern world, the opportunities for women to give something of value to the human family are greater than ever, because through their own efforts, they are now beginning to play their full part in public life. Representatives from 42 different parts of the world gathered to attend the Commonwealth Games. There are many unpublicised meetings, but it is not often that the Commonwealth is able to get together for a great public ceremony. On this occasion, it was sport that brought them to Scotland, and they came to compete and to enjoy themselves. We entertained them all in the garden of our home in Edinburgh, and I was very conscious that each of the athletes I met represented a country as different and interesting as those I have been able to visit during the year. Last June, we celebrated the 40th anniversary of D-Day. That occasion in Normandy was a memorable one for all of us who were able to be there. It was partly a day of sadness as we paid our respects to those who died for us, but it was also a day full of comradeship and hope. For me, perhaps, the most lasting impression was one of thankfulness that the 40 intervening years have been ones of comparative peace. Sooner or later, we all become aware of the passing of the years. But every now and then, we get a sharp reminder that time is moving on rather quickly than we expect. This happened to me last month when we celebrated our 40th wedding anniversary. I was very touched that so many of you were kind enough to send messages of good wishes. There is no point in regretting the passage of time. Experience should help us to take a more balanced view of events and to be more understanding about the foibles of human nature. I shall never forget the state visit of President Mandela. The most gracious of men has shown us all how to accept the facts of the past without bitterness. How to see new opportunities as more important than old disputes and how to look forward with courage and optimism. His example is a continuing inspiration to the whole Commonwealth and to all those everywhere who work for peace and reconciliation. As a daughter, a mother and a grandmother, I often find myself seeking advice or being asked for it in all three capacities. No age group has a monopoly of wisdom, and indeed, I think the young can sometimes be wiser than us. But the older I get, the more conscious I become of the difficulties young people have to face as they learn to live in the modern world. We parents and grandparents must learn to trust our children and grandchildren as they seize their opportunities. But we can, at the same time, caution and comfort if things can go wrong, or guide and explain. Last June, Prince Philip and I gave a party for 900 of Britain's young achievers. Buckingham Palace was brimming with young people who, in their short lives, have already set an example to us all. They are living proof that the timeless virtues of honesty, integrity, initiative and compassion are just as important today as they have ever been. We hear much of public life, the hurly-burly of Parliament, the media, big business, city life. But for most people, their contribution, at whatever age, is made quietly through their local communities, just like so many of those young achievers. To most of them, service is its own reward. Their public life is their church their school, their sports club, their local council. The, the true measure of Christ's influence 
is not only in the lives of the saints, but also in the good works quietly done by millions of men and women, day in and day out throughout the centuries. Many will have been inspired by Jesus' simple but powerful teaching. Love God and love thy neighbour as thyself. In other words, treat others as you would like them to treat you. I know just how much I rely on my own faith to guide me through the good times and the bad. Each day is a new beginning. I know that the only way to live my life is to try to do what is right, to take the long view, to give of my best in all that he brings, and to put my trust in God. To mark my 90th birthday, volunteers and supporters of the 600 charities of which I am patron came to lunch in the mall. Many of these organisations are modest in size, but inspire me with the work they do, from giving friendship and support to our veterans, the elderly or the bereaved, to championing music and dance, providing animal welfare or protecting our fields and forests. Their selfless devotion and generosity of spirit is an example to us all. Reflecting on these events makes me grateful for the blessings of home and family, and in particular for 70 years of marriage. I didn't know that anyone had invented the term platinum for a 70th wedding anniversary when I was born. You weren't expected to live that long. Even Prince Philip has decided it's time to slow down a bit, having, as he economically put it, done his bit. But I know his support and unique sense of humour will remain as strong as ever as we enjoy spending time this Christmas with our family and look forward to welcoming new members into it next year. Through the many changes I have seen over the years, faith, family and friendship have been not only a constant for me, but a source of personal comfort and reassurance. We should take comfort that while we may have more still to endure, better days will return. We will be with our friends again. We will be with our families again. We will meet again. But for now, I send my thanks and warmest good wishes to you all. Thank you to you all for the readings this morning. Our reading from Philippians that Susan read for us is an encouragement from the Apostle Paul to imitate Jesus' humility. Paul writes, in your relationship with each other, have the same mindset as Jesus. And then he goes on to describe what that mindset looks like. One, Jesus had a position of greatness, being in very nature God, did not consider to use this to his advantage. Two, on the contrary, he took on the nature of a servant. Three, which led him to the ultimate sacrifice on the cross. And four, which resulted in God exalting him to the highest place. Today, as we gather as God's people here in this national time of mourning, we gather to mourn the life of Queen Elizabeth II. And we can all look back, as other people are doing all over the world this morning, and say she was someone who imitated Jesus. She had a position of greatness, and yet she didn't use it to her own advantage. From day one, she nailed her colours to the mast when she said, I shall dedicate myself and you to your service. I want to show that the crown it's not merely an abstract symbol of our unity, but a personal and living bond between you and me. She saw her great position as an opportunity to serve and follow the way of Christ. When I heard of her passing, I was with Susan at the time, and four words just sprang into my mind immediately. Four words that I've heard 
mentioned throughout the last few days. Constant. Since our passing, people have been using this word. Queen Elizabeth has been a constant figure and force in the life of our nation. On Friday, I had the privilege of speaking to our oldest member who is in hospital at this time, Margaret Young, an elder in this church, who will be 103 on her next birthday. And I asked Margaret about the Queen, and her eyes lit up. And she said she was a great person. For Margaret and many people, the Queen was a constant in their lives. Margaret said, you always thought that she would be there. You never imagined the day that she would die. And that speaks of her constancy. What gave her this constancy? I believe her relationship with God through Jesus gave her the strength to stay constant to the course that she was called to follow. She had a North Star to guide her. And that North Star was Jesus. Secondly, she was consistent. The mark of a truly great person is consistency. We can all start a race well, but it's how we finish that ultimately is important. She started her race well when she became queen as a young, beautiful, perhaps in her own words, rather green young woman. She said to the nation, at the beginning, I declare before you all that my whole life, whether it be long or short, shall be devoted to your service. In retrospect, we can say, well done, your majesty. Or in the words of Jesus, well done, good and faithful servant. She stayed focused on the task before her to serve this nation and commonwealth. She had many highs and lows that we all know many joys and sorrows, and yet she remained consistent to her calling in each event of life, whether it be war or peace. She knew that consistency, which was an enduring value. Thirdly, consider it. A mark of our Queen, and you've heard it umpteen times already, has been how considerate she was to others. She recognised the contribution that other people made, common people. She loved young people and encouraged them to make a difference to the world. She was concerned with the challenges that young people face today. Of course she would be. As a great-grandmother, as a grandmother, as a mother. She faced many challenges with her own family and she used these challenges to be considerate. She was considerate towards women as we've heard and pushed for them to gain greater participation in public life and she saw how women have made a difference to our world. Again she followed the example of Jesus Jesus, who was so considerate to women in an age when women were classed as second-class citizens, Jesus lifted them up. She considered Jesus' teachings, love God and love your neighbour, and treat others as you would like them to treat you, and those qualities shone through her. And fourth and finally, compassionate. She loved the story of the Good Samaritan. We've heard it often in our Christmas speeches. A timeless story of how we reach out to help others. Others of a different religion, a different colour of skin, a different language. It doesn't matter. The Samaritan saw his enemy lying crumpled in a heap and he knelt down and helped him. And this resonated with our Queen, and she saw in it a way forward for us as human beings. And in her own words, I know just how much I rely on my faith to guide me through the good times and the bad times. 
constant, consistent, considerate, compassionate. Four qualities that our Lord Jesus Christ had in abundance. Four qualities that shone through the Queen, that made her the person that she was, and yes, may I say, still is in heaven. But what I love about the Queen's faith is its simplicity. Yes, she was a church goer. She heard hundreds and thousands of sermons throughout her life. Many from Church of Scotland ministers when she was here in Scotland. I believe those sermons were important. Those sermons helped her and strengthened her and gave her the energy and drive to go forward because they pointed her to Christ. You will hear many fine tributes over these next few days for the Queen. Be thankful for them. At the end of the race, when the good fight has been fought, the Bible tells us there is a crown laid up in store for us. Right now, she has replaced her human crown for an even greater crown. A crown that will be placed on her head by the Lord Jesus Christ. A crown of eternity. But she will not need to rule any longer. She will be amongst others. One amongst equals. But she will be at peace. And this beautiful image of her walking with her family, with Prince Philip again, with her friends, along the banks of that great river that John speaks about in Revelations, flowing from God. And on each side of the river is the tree of life, and its leaves are for the healing of the nation. What, what a picture. Our Queen is there today, walking beside that river. Thank you, Your Majesty, for your constancy, your consistency, your considerations, and your compassion. And thank you for walking in the footsteps of Jesus all your life, and for the example that you have left for us to follow. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, one God now and forevermore. Amen. Let us worship God again and we turn to 694, 694, brother, sister, let me serve you. Come to God in prayer. Let us pray. Our generous God, we come to you today and we thank you for your grace and your goodness and we give to you our offering. We ask you to bless it and to use it for the furtherance of the Christian faith here in this community and further afield. We come to you today thanking you for our Queen, blessed by grace, resolute in service, modest in person. We thank you for the years of her reign and the sweep of history through which she provided, both anchor and springboard. We thank you for her dedication to this nation and commonwealth and for the rich gifts of wisdom, kindness and inclusion she brought to her long decades. We give you thanks for the lives that she touched, for the radiance of her smile and the encouragement of her words. And we entrust her, Lord, knowing that she is in your love and your grace. Lord, we pray for this country, a country that she loved. We pray, Lord, for our community that you would continue to bless it. We pray for the King, God save him. 
and bless him in these days of preparation. Bless him as he takes over the mantle. Bless him as he goes forward with strength of character, openness of heart, suppleness of mind, and generosity of spirit. And may he walk in the footsteps of Christ as his mother did. And may he look to you the day, for the days that he has on this world. Lord, bless our congregation. Be with those, we pray today, in hospital, recovering at home. Be near to them, Lord. Grant them your peace and your strength. Bless them. Be with all who grieve the loss of a loved one. This we pray in Christ's name. Amen. Let us turn to the hymn 161. O God, our help in ages past, our hope for years to come, 161. And once we sing this and we will have the blessing, if we remain standing and we'll sing a, the first verse of the national anthem. So 161, O God, our help in ages past. him who is able to keep you from stumbling and to present you before his glorious presence without fault and with great joy to the only God our Savior be glory majesty power and authority through Jesus Christ our Lord before all ages now and forevermore Save the king.